AI agents, as we all know, are moving very fast, but enterprises are asking a tougher question. Can we actually trust the model context protocol or MCP to handle mission critical workloads? It is becoming the standard for connecting agents, tools, and data, but adoption at scale hinges on one thing, making MCP secure, governable, and observable. Without that, sensitive data like healthcare records or financial transactions will stay locked away. To explore what it will take to get there, I am joined once again by Randy Bias, VP of Strategy and Technology at Mirantis. Randy, let's start with the big picture. MCP is clearly gaining traction, but if enterprises are going all in, they need trust. When it comes to sensitive data, what kind of challenges do you see in making MCP secure, governable, and observable at scale? So there's uh, challenges on several dimensions. So first is that you've got the potential for kind of uh, a new form of shadow IT, call it shadow agents, where you've got developers deploying uh, MCP servers in places that they shouldn't, potentially accessing data that they shouldn't. Uh, another challenge is that um, there's going to be times where you specifically need agents to talk to some of your high sensitivity data, but you may want them to use on-prem inference engines, LLMs that you are running and hosting and managing yourself so that you can feel comfortable that you're not sending certain kind of data offsite, like electronic health care records, customer PII data, those kinds of things. And then third, and perhaps most importantly, is um, MCP is sort of the foundational piece that we see that's enabling agentic workflows and agentic app applications. And we've got to basically allow the, uh, allow, uh, agentic engineers inside the enterprise to go as fast as possible. If they can't, if the process slows down, if there's too much friction, then they may route around kind of the security and compliance pieces or they, or it may slow down adoption in the enterprise. And then we have a hard time getting to the business value that AI potentially represents, which is a problem. So somehow we've got to thread the needle of allowing agentic, agentic engineers to go as fast as possible while doing it in a secure and compliant way. And how do we actually make MCP secure, governable, and observable at enterprise scale in practice? Yeah, so that's the good news, right? So we've got a baseline platform that we already know uh, can scale cloud native apps and AI native apps are just another form of cloud native apps and that's Kubernetes. So we know how to scale that, we know how to operate it. So that's great news that we have that foundation. Um, and then there's a bunch of open source um, uh, people out there in open source land solving these problems. So you've got secure MCP gateways such as Agent Gateway and ArchGW, which can allow you to uh, basically have policies to connect to guardrail systems to basically make sure that your agents can only talk to what they're supposed to talk to. And then you combine these things together with some of the new capabilities coming out of uh, Anthropic, like the MCP registry, and you've kind of got all the pieces. What you don't have is sort of like a fully baked end-to-end -end product, number one. Nobody's got that really yet. Uh, number two, you know, the patterns that we're going to use in production aren't clear yet. So we're kind of in those early stages like we were in 2009, 2010, 2011, we're trying to figure out cloud native. Well, now we're trying to figure out AI native, what the patterns look like, how we secure them. Um, and so that's the early days. So I expect that we'll see a lot of trial and error. We'll see a lot of services based engagements so that the early adopters are working with companies like Mirantis to basically deploy what's out there, kind of cobble it together. And then as the learning occurs, um, you know, that'll basically transform into some enterprise products over time. Looking at Mirantis, you are all in on Kubernetes and now also on AI. What is Mirantis doing specifically to address these gaps? Policy, identity, observability, and how does that fit into the broader MCP ecosystem? Yeah, so we're all in on MCP. Um, we are going to announce a very soon a set of fast track services to basically help enterprises get up and running uh, using uh, special professional services and a set of blueprints for delivering a secure MCP control plane. And that'll be rolled out here probably in the next few weeks. 
Um, and then that's kind of our, our path to helping enterprises get successful in the, in the early stages while there's still a lot of question marks around um, the, the patterns that are there. We're also working on training so that we can help enterprises that are trying to bring their agentic engineers up to speed and understand, you know, the proper way to use agents, the proper way to use tools, how to secure them, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to put all those pieces in, in place from kind of a services perspective so that we can give enterprises what they need today with the tooling that's out there and then continue to be flexible because there's so much happening that's moving so fast that we expect to see lots and lots of new entries, lots and lots of new solutions around MCP in the coming days. While MCP is getting popular, there are plenty of competing approaches out there. From an enterprise buyer's perspective, why is MCP the right foundation compared to proprietary connectors or frameworks? Yeah, so I think that the key to MCP, to understanding MCP, is that at least right now, kind of in the first phase, it is the tool by which it is the it is the solution by which you can connect existing frontier models from Anthropic, from uh, OpenAI, uh, from Grok uh, to uh, tools that uh, connect to uh, existing data that you have on prem. So if we kind of look at your average enterprise, you know they started adopting uh, AI tools already, kind of with the um, their uh, white collar knowledge base workers, whether it's coding tools or whether it's help with marketing and writing, that's all kind of well in play, but you've got to start thinking about kind of what's the next set. So there's another set of data that's um, you want to connect to those frontier models, but it's on-prem. So you need to have some tools that can talk to that data and that can push it out to an LLM and you can use it as a rich data source for whatever kind of agentic workflows you're going to put together. That second set of data right now um, is that is, you know, less sensitive. Um, but, and so you can use the existing MCP tools to be, get access to it, to develop new applications around it. But if we want to get to where we ultimately want to get to, which is very sensitive data, financial records, things like this, then we've got to have really a secure MCP control plane that allows you to make sure that the data that you want is uh, not being leaked onto the internet somehow. Right. That's the thing I think that scares the security and compliance people the most, potential data leakage. We often talk about responsible or ethical AI. We have seen cases where AI systems try to cover their tracks, even deleting code or making things up after deleting code. Bias is another concern, especially in mission critical or sensitive industries. How do you see this problem evolving when MCP agents are accessing very sensitive data is that a concern now or is something for later? I, I mean, it's absolutely a concern. I mean, the, the fundamental challenge is that each, each company has its own unique set of situations where it needs to put in place guardrails and protection to make sure that agents are deployed in a certain way. They're only used in a certain way. Um, you know, one of the examples I like to give is that um, in Thailand, you know, you, it's against the law to talk about the king of Thailand. Whether you like that or not, you know, all those enterprises in Thailand need to comply with that. So they need to make sure there's a set of guardrails that disallow certain kinds of um, queries to LLMs, both on-prem and off-prem. And that's just the reality of their very particular kind of regulatory situation. And you're going to see that both, you know, kind of from a, a vertical perspective, you're going to see it from uh, you know, geopolitical, you know, or, or geographical, I should say, perspective, um, you know, the EU is going to have its own requirements. And so each company kind of needs to own its own policies around how agents are deployed and what they can talk to and, and what they can, you know, ask the LLMs or not ask the LLMs and so on, along with all the data leakage challenges. So that's why you need kind of a, a secure MCP control plane that's got a sophisticated policy engine and a way to, to help you deploy those guardrails uh, across your entire agentic workflows. Earlier, you also warned about the risk of shadow agents, developers spinning up MCP servers on their own laptops. What's the enterprise grade way to balance governance and developer freedom? Because the goal is guardrails, not gates. So innovation is in slowed down, but risks are controlled. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, again, right, it's, it's a unique new situation. You, 
weren't worried so much about guardrails when it came to kind of cloud native days. Uh, um, you know, the, the, what's unique about agents and AI in general is that you're fundamentally in this continuous loop where your agent is, you know, where normally you would have this discrete business logic that your security team could vet, that your development teams could vet. Now you've got this uh, non-deterministic business logic that comes from the LLM. So you make a call out to the LLM, you've got all the contacts, and you basically say, what should I do? And then it tells you what to do. So your business logic, in effect, right now is being outsourced to the LLMs from the apps. And you get back the business logic each time in a in a non-deterministic fashion, and then you execute it, and then you take the output, and then you run it back up to the LLM again. And so there's this, it's it's a whole new you know game. And so we are going to learn together, you know, the ways in which we can make that secure. And it's going to be tricky. It's going to be a combination of things like guardrails, where you clearly box out certain kinds of um uh uh you know uh, uh context being sent to the LLM it's going to be AIs assessing um basically request to an LLM uh and it's going to be other things where you uh potentially have kind of like virtual air gapping you might say okay my agents that need to access my electronic healthcare record they may not access external LLMs or ex- external inference engines they can only access our on prem inference engines. So you're making sure that the sensitive data is staying on prem and is never being sent off site. And then it's going to be a hybrid combination of all these things. And you're going to need to have not just the policy, but the observability and transparency so you can understand what's talking to what, what they're saying. And you're going to need to figure out ways to integrate it into your existing security tools so that you can get alerts when you think that some of the policies have been uh, violated. So it's it's uh, we're all in learning mode right now. Now let's just talk about CIOs or CISOs. They want a broader bird's eye view. To them, observability is everything. How much progress is being made on building good tracking, testing, and auditability in an MCP-driven environment? I'd say that is very, very nascent. Um, and and it's got it's getting it's getting more complicated because you know, we have sort of talked about kind of agents and, and instrumenting agents and, and observability there, but then you've got tools, which the agents are calling via MCP. And now you're seeing people doing some clever things like wrapping the tools with yet another agent. So now there's another observability point. Um, and so I think that we still haven't figured out uh, a, the, the ways in which we're going to handle this, but it's going to be a very hard distributed systems problem. And, you know, we'll, we'll start with what we've got today and we're going to have to evolve it to something that's more sophisticated over time. That doesn't even get into the whole kind of sort of A-B style testing that we used to do with web apps that needs to be applied with um, agentic apps as well, which is I, I changed the model. I updated the GPUs that it runs on. You know, what happened to the accuracy? I don't know. So you've got this whole notion of evaluations. And you want to be able to make sure that you're not regressing in terms of performance and capabilities each time that you do a new release or even change your GPUs out to a different provider or a different uh, a hardware stack. Um, and so that's all super tricky. And um, I don't think there's any easy answers right now. It's all about, um, you know, doing the experiments, figuring out what works and what doesn't, just like in the early cloud days. These are still early days. What kind of indicators or milestones should enterprise leader watch for in the next few months, not years, to know MCP is getting closer to being mission critical? So I, I think it's a little too early for me to come up with like a clear list of like, these are the things that are necessary to make it mission critical. I think everybody has a, a pretty good idea of sort of like the basics, right? Observability, security, policy enforcement. You know, some of that's, you know, um, very obvious discoverability. Um, but I think, again, you know, not to sort of like, you know, kick the can down the road for forever. But, you know, when when we were in the early days of learning around, say, like OpenStack, we were doing all professional services based engagements before we wound up going to product. And we learned a lot of things about what worked, what didn't work. You know, um, everybody in the beginning really wanted to create their own snowflake with every single OpenStack deployment. 
And then eventually kind of like the best practices were learned, kind of the, 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 uh, methods with the least friction. Um, and it sort of coalesced into sort of a smaller set of options, which was the most common, right? Something like Ceph became, you know, largely a very de facto default storage system, even though it's not part of OpenStack because it was easy on commodity x86 white box hardware. I uh, became like our default when we went to product. Um, now, of course, customers might want something besides Ceph, but we started there in the product because in the community, it was the thing that sort of won as a default for storage. Um, and so we'll see the same happen here, which is that over time, you know, the, the best practices will emerge and we'll have sort of a, a better idea of, of what those mission critical gates are. Like right now, I think we, we have a basic picture. We're kind of in the zip code, but it's going to take some time to go, uh, work it all out. And then, you know, the kinds of policies that we're talking about are a little bit different than the policies that we've seen in the past, right? So existing policy frameworks and engines are going to have to be updated. Or new ones created because you're, you know, you're, you're looking at, uh, an agentic workflow that's a very different kind of system than we've had in the past. So I think it's, it's, we're all in learning mode right now. Randy, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your perspective. Thanks for your insight and I look forward to chat with you again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. For those watching, if your company is working on MCP adoption or tackling these security and governance challenges, we love to hear your stories. Please don't hesitate and reach out to our teams and don't forget to subscribe, like and stay tuned for more conversations. Thank you for watching.